Hey guys, it's Stephanie here with the Flower Fanatic. I hope you're having an awesome day. It's mid-July, super hot now. We're experiencing about 100 degree weather every day. It's definitely a heat wave right now. And on top of that, we were gone for about 10 days. We just got back, my husband and my five kids, from a trip to Mexico. And this is the first time I've left all of my flowers. I had some new ones I'd put in the ground that haven't been quite established yet. And I was really worried about what was gonna happen to them. I knew I had some watering system in place, but it was just so hot and I didn't have control of the situation. So we asked for a lot of help and thankfully they all did a great job. I've only had a few plants die, which was okay. Now I'm learning where I have some dry spots in my yard where the sprinklers aren't hitting them and so now I can fix that for next year but overall it's looking pretty good but I also got COVID like a month ago and it kind of knocked me out so my weeds are out of control so I haven't really been working in my yard like I want to for about three to three weeks to a month now and so my container pots haven't been getting fertilized like I'd hoped and neither have my hanging baskets and they're not blooming as prolifically as I wish they would. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna fertilize, what I'm gonna do and how often. And then also my cutting garden started to get a lot of blooms while we were gone and now they need deadheading. And so I'm gonna go ahead and start deadheading all those flowers. It's really important to deadhead because this gets rid of those wasted seeds dead flowers that the bees put energy towards that you don't want them putting energy towards because it's just a waste of time and to help produce more blooms and just make them a lot more prolific. I'm just going to go ahead and use Fertilome. I love this stuff. That middle number right there says 58%, which is phosphorus, which is really what you want when your annuals start to take off. The heat sets in because it's just going to help produce those blooms. It's really simple. It's a liquid fertilizer. I'm just going to put it in my backpack sprayer. So my new plan with this stuff is I'm just going to start fertilizing about every three to four days. At this rate, I want to dilute it about 50%. If you're going to do it once a week, keep it at full strength. If you're a really high maintenance water and you don't mind doing it every day, just dilute it by about 60 to 70 percent. So on this packaging, it says to use about four teaspoons per four gallons of water. So I'm just going to go ahead and use two teaspoons in my four gallon backpack sprayer. I love using my backpack sprayer. I let them dry out a little bit today. I don't want them overly soggy, especially since I'm going to saturate them well with the fertilizer tonight. And then in another three or four days, I'll just repeat the process. Here are my hanging baskets. There are a few lurking variables with these baskets. I originally had these hanging in my front porch. As you can see, I have them hanging on this arbor in the garden, but on the front porch, it was south facing. So I thought that it got a lot of sun. As I observed the daylight, it just wasn't getting a lot of sun on half of it. So right here, it was pretty much shaded. And this side was getting sunlight. These are all sun loving flowers that I put in here. I have Lobelia, Creeping Jenny, Lantana, which is definitely a lover of the sun. Some verbena, look how pretty this is, gorgeous. And I haven't put these in here very long. And then my alyssum, my sweet alyssum and then sweet potato vine. Anyway, they need a lot of sun. So I had to move them over here. So I had them out there for about a month. They've only been out here for one and a half weeks. So I think they're really gonna start taking off now that they have a lot of sunlight. My fuchsia hanging baskets have been in my cherry tree. You can see they're starting to bud out like crazy. So many buds and right here, See, that one needed to be deadheaded. It's starting to die a little bit. So I missed the first round of flowers because we were in Mexico, but I'm just gonna make sure I break those off. They just pop right off. I cannot wait for all of these to start coming out. It's just gonna go nuts here in a little bit. I've been so surprised with how much water my fuchsia have needed. I thought they would need a lot less water just because they're in that shade all day long, but they are water lovers. <laughs> they soak up that water. I have been needing to definitely water them every day. I thought it could go maybe every three days, but they need a ton of water, even though they don't get a lot of that sunlight and they do need plenty of fertilizer. Here are my potted containers and I'm really happy with how my canna lilies are doing. They're just doing fabulous. Right here you can see that I need to deadhead that. I've got a lot of new growth coming on. And then my coleus is starting to finally take off, especially this one right here. Isn't this such a beautiful annual? And then right here, this coleus, besides the grasshoppers just getting after everything that I have this year, this is starting to really fill in and take off. I wanted to add that with the fertilome, kind of use all of it the same day. I'm not sure if it keeps its potency after 24 hours. I know that with Roundup or some weed killers, it's not effective after 24 hours. So you want to make sure you start over. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply that same thing with the furlough. It doesn't say anything on the instructions on the label. So I'm just going to trust my instinct and go ahead and do that because I want to make sure I'm applying something that is working.
I cannot wait to show you what these hanging pots and container baskets look like in a few months. They're really gonna take off and start to explode. Let's head over to my cutting garden and start deadheading. I could do this all day long. It's so relaxing to me. My cosmos has definitely needed the most deadheading because they go the most crazy with their blooming. So I'm gonna be spending a lot of time this summer deadheading cosmos because the more you cut them, the more they come. This is definitely a come and cut flower. There aren't a ton of zinnias that I need to deadhead, but I'm gonna go ahead and harvest some of these beautiful zinnias. Look at this Benares giant salmon rose. This is a gorgeous zinnia. It's just gonna get bigger as these get more mature. I got a Benares giant white zinnia. And then over here, there are some Zinderella peaches. And these are the ones that need to be deadheaded more than any of the zinnias. I'm gonna go ahead and harvest some of those zinnias and some of these cosmos to make a beautiful vase. I'll throw in some, maybe some celosia. Anyways, let's get deadheading a few of these. My bigger ones just have one bloom, so. My amaranth needs to be harvested and deadheaded. I got celosia. My little flocks that were tiny are starting to bloom. My dahlia's right here. Nothing needs to happen here, but they are recovering from the caterpillar damage. They were just destroying my dahlias. The diametaceous earth is helping. It's getting it under control. I've just been putting that on at night to help them recover, and I'm not seeing any new grasshopper and earwig damage. I just have been very diligent on putting that on, and then I have to wash it off in the morning. And then I got some sunflowers, white nights that need to be staked up and deadheaded. As soon as I get finished with all this deadheading, I'll just kind of put them into a fun bouquet. We'll head over to my front yard and remove those violas and pansies I was talking about. There are still flowers on them, so I'm having a hard time pulling them out. They're just looking really worn. So I'm glad those zinnias are filling in to fill that void of those missing flowers. So yard work can be as much maintenance as you want it to be, or a lot to a little. I don't mind doing a lot of work in my yard. There's always something to do, but it keeps me energized and excited each day. It's all worth it in the end when you have beautiful flowers. Right here is my celosia. I've got my zinnias. Aren't these colors so pretty together? Here is the amaranth. I love the dark contrast that that brings. And some white benary giant zinnias. I don't typically love celosia, but I like this color. And then there's some of my Chinese forget-me-not. My snapdragon, that is a cool type of snapdragon. The bloom's a little bit different than your typical one. I actually found this. This was a weed hanging out in my yard. Um, I'm just gonna turn around and show you all the different stuff I have going on here. But I think it looks really pretty. Lots of fun colors together. It's a beautiful combination. And then the cosmos I was just kind of harvesting, they're still a little bit more spent than I'd like. Ideally, you wanna harvest them when they're dark like this before they've opened up. But for now, I'm just trying to produce more blooms on those flowers. So you can see why I'm having a hard time getting rid of these, but they are definitely worn. Right here you can see that they're just starting to die off. So I'm going to go ahead and pull all of these out. I'm going to keep my snapdragons in here. They're definitely going to take off in the fall. And then my zinnias are starting to pop up and take over. This is really exciting. <laughs> at all those weeds those are the ones I'm talking about this is actually a really nutritious weed you can eat it but it is taken over it's healthy for you I've actually been eating it a little bit it tastes pretty good it has a hint of lemon um, anyway I'm gonna have to clean all those out pull them up yes we all gardeners have weeds it definitely takes work no matter what you do sometimes you're gonna get weeds and then I know this is like the third time I've showed this hollyhock but it is still blooming it is going crazy still it's nearly seven to eight feet tall but I wanted to add one thing with this hollyhock so I'm definitely not going to deadhead it. That would be crazy. But all of these are spent blooms and these are seed heads. So you can pull all these off and replant them. So one plant will produce you hundreds of that same hollyhock. I'm going to go ahead and start pulling out all of these violas, get all these weeds pulled up. I know it looks like a lot of weeds, but I can get all of this done in probably 30 minutes. So it's going to look dramatically different in a short amount of time. <laughs> 
princess. <laughs> hey, look at this pretty flower. I have to admit that took a little bit longer than 30 minutes, more like an hour, but it looks so much better. It's nice and clean. I am not gonna plant anything here until maybe fall and incorporate some of those kales, those cooler weather plants. Kind of leave it alone and just let the zinnias take over. Some areas just get more weeds than others. This is always a weedy area because it gets a lot of sun. It's south facing, gets a lot of compost and nutrients. Um, so I wanted to show you over here where this side of the house, I haven't had to weed. As everything starts to fill in, as my peonies get big, my insonia takes over, um, it's gonna get a lot easier. I just keep telling myself that. There's just so much area to cover right now. But this area over here, I've only weeded it once in the spring and it didn't even have any, and I hardly had any weeds at that point. So I rarely have to come over here, which is really nice. It gives me a little break. Um, my incredible balls have even gotten bigger, I swear, since the last time I showed you. They filled in even more nicely at this point. And um, I'm just, I have to show you again one more time. Look how massive that is. They are doing just wonderful. Thanks for joining me in my gardening today. I had a lot of maintenance to do. I'm really excited to see what my container plants are gonna do now. I hopefully won't be getting sick in the next two months and I can just focus and take care of them. If you are interested in seeing them in the next month or two, hit the subscribe button. I'm always fast to update on things because I think it's fun to see the transformation from the beginning to the end and kind of see how things evolve. So it gives you kind of an understanding of what to expect because it can be kind of confusing at the beginning if you're new to gardening and you don't know what the heck you're doing. Anyway, have a great day gardening. Hit the like button if you like this video and we will talk to you later.